Hello, uh, my name is Josh Halpern. I'm talking to you from Washington, DC. Delmar Larson is the founder and executive director of the project. And here's some contact information. And here are some examples of printed books. We're mostly online, but we do provide printed books for all of our texts. Libertex is currently supported by a large grant from the Department of Education in the United States. We have support from California Learning Labs, Merlot, California State Universities, and UC Davis, as well as NASA. But this is one of my favorite slides. The oldest educational tool is recitation from memory. As any academic knows, writing on the wall is the second oldest. And textbooks, textbooks go back quite far. But the purpose of this talk is to convince you that Libertex is the newest and best educational tool in the realm of texts. So a very brief discussion of what is OER. There are two things. OER is free. It's not low cost, it's free. And it's an openly licensed so that others can adapt it and use it and distribute it. Libertex is an independent nonprofit public benefit corporation. We were founded in 2008 at the University of California, Davis. Uh, currently, about 20 institutions of higher learning are involved. We have over 100 faculty in, uh, deeply involved in project governance and curation, and many more contribute and use the concepts. But primarily, we're a community of instructors and librarians. Again. So Libertex is to, to dedicated to providing excellent educational materials that are really truly accessible and comprehensive across the curriculum. So why should you be interested? Well, it's easy to create your own materials for your courts and students. The libraries span the undergraduate curriculum and go a bit further in both directions. Uh, the instructors can remix and add content quickly and simply. We have a lot of advanced features we take it. We push technology. It's zero cost to students, faculty, and institutions. And we provide a uniform cloud-based infrastructure, which makes it easy to curate. There are no local IT costs. We have uh, technology that enables analysis of student learning, and that allows data-driven improvement of OER to optimize for. When most people think of OER, they use this model. Uh, an instructor finds something interesting on the web, they point their students to it, and the students go get it and read it. This is not very far away from the textbook model going over to e-textbooks. This doesn't really provide what's needed. There can be high operating costs or network fees. Uh, Link rot is a terrible disease of such uh, libraries. And these kind of textbooks are static and they can be expensive. So there are a lot of people, a lot of repositories and repositories. Libertex model is somewhat different. We want the interaction between the instructor and the library to be bi-directional. We want to surround the libraries with technology services that enhance the libraries as they're used by students either directly or through uh, a learning management system. We provide annotation. We provide homework system, executable code that can be incorporated into the text, learning analytics. We have bot servers that can curate the text on a technical level, cleaning up the uh, HTML and uh, we provide, a, of course, a uh, LTI cartridge that allows you to bring it into your LMS. Well, every slide, every talk has to have a slide that you can't read. Hopefully, uh, this talk will be available later and you can pause on this and read all these things. We have over 2,000 texts with over 300,000 pages, which are available for remixing. And this is growing rapidly. We have up to five customized campus courses per institution housed within the campus bookshelves. And access, again, is online, uh, direct. Uh, we provide a commons 
We provide a remixer, many, many other things I'll talk about as we go on. But we have, if you need more courses for your campus, we have a network which has a thousand dollar per year cost. Uh, this, if you're a member of the network, you get your own commons, you get project management tools and many other things. There are some things that cost extra, basically training and access to the homework system because this requires us to maintain additional servers and that has a cost. And we've also provide training. So let me talk very, very briefly now about accessibility. True accessibility is many dimensional. It's ease of use by everyone, everywhere. It's cost because if you can't afford something, it's not accessible to you. It's technology. Again, the technology of the project has to match the technology that's available to the students. It's customizability so that you can make something that's accessible to people uh, as they are. And it's sustainability because if something goes away, it's not accessible anymore. Again, we have a worldwide audience. There are even some people reading living texts in Greenland occasionally. Uh, we operate in the cloud on a commercial system that has an extremely high uptime. Uh, and everything is one click and portable into your LMS. We provide PDFs. Uh, these are provided at cost. Again, there's a printing cost, but you can download it. Uh, we're, we're almost ready to provide EPUB format. We can host the system or the text on a Raspberry Pi. We lose some, of course, we lose some uh, fancy stuff. But you can take this into any remote location and it serves as a Wi Fi hotspot. And we've just come out with a Drupal based uh, FOSS app, which we call Solo, which means that if you want to operate the Libertex uh, on, a, uh, on your own computer, you can do that. Uh, one of the cute things we do is on our textbooks, uh, all the videos in the textbook have a uh, cute have a code. And you can point your phone at that and read it. So let me transition now to the second part of the talk, telling you how to use LibreText, showing you what's there. Our uh, team members at Sacramento City College have built an on ramp. And the idea is that you learn about OER, uh, you identify the topics you're interested in through your textbook, uh, you create a map of these, you evaluate it. You identify gaps. Uh, we have teams of mostly of students who can help you fill those gaps, find materials, and bring those materials into LibreTex in the LibreTex format, and you create a map. Map might look something like this. Somebody can go right down through it, and you'll see using our remixer, it's very easy now to create a book with a map like this. That's this process here, and it goes into the classroom. And the hallmark of OER is once you've got the text in the classroom, you can go back and you can improve it. Here's some more contact information. Leave this up for a minute or two. We do have office hours. It's 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, after dinner for people in Europe, okay. And uh, now I'm going to go on the net and hopefully this works. We have a commons. These are our libraries. You can see there are 14 libraries. Uh, each textbook is can be viewed in the library. Uh, you can have an advanced search up again. Here's one textbook. If I click on any of these, I'll go to that uh, chapter in the textbook. You can download a complete PDF. Let's start that off. 
you can buy a print copy. Fairly inexpensive. Uh, obviously, the postage is going to change uh, in Europe. Uh, here's you can get it with full color. You can get it with a hardcover. <clears throat> These are upcharges. Uh, you can download your uh, LTI common cartridge. You can, if you're reading this book, or anybody reading this book, you can submit an adoption report if it's being used for a class. You can submit a peer review report. We're happy to get both of them. Uh, now, I showed you the library's link. Uh, there's a link to homeworks. Where, uh, these are available then to instructors. They're not open, really, and to what's under development. Every member, if you want, an, every member of the network has their own commons. Uh, you can it, request an instructor account, very short form. The important thing is uh, a URL that shows you an instructor. Okay. Coming back here. Uh, what I'm going to show you next is a conductor, our conductor, which is our project management tool. Let me come back here. So this is my uh, list of projects I'm working on. We have announcements. In general, uh, we have projects. I'm going to look at this project first. This is one I'm working on. See, it's not quite done. There are various uh, properties. So I know where the original URL, this is an import from a now defunct Spanish uh, repository. You can set up the team. You can build a timeline, and there's a Gantt chart. And sometimes it's just easier to look at the calendar view. When you want to invite people in to do peer review, or you want to do a peer review from there for that project. Very interesting. Uh, part here, we set up an accessibility matrix that you can use to evaluate. You can import the table of contents from your Libretex into the accessibility matrix, and then you can uh, and. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, set up, we have set up a bot and we are going to coordinate the bot that, that does some accessibility review with the uh, accessibility compliance matrix. So a lot of this will be filled in automatically. We have out here. And we have an H5P instance that anyone can use. We have several thousand questions already in it. Uh, this can be sorted by area, tags, authors, keywords, and types. <clears throat> also by license. Each question has its own CC or public domain license. And let me come back here to the commons and the libraries. And I'm going to go to the social science library. And I could go directly to any of the sections, but I can also go directly to the library. And this is what a student or a reader would see. 
learning objects are things that don't fit into the category of the textbook, teaching materials, uh, things like that. The bookshelves are curated by Liber the Libertex community. So for example, here's psychology and here are books. Now we have uh, basically brought in books from other uh, repositories, but the key here is we spend a lot of time cleaning up the code so that we, we can use our automatic tools, our technology uh, on this. And if we introduce new technology, then it automatically extends across the entire corpus because everything has been uh, formatted to a common uh, standard. So here's a book. And we can go to a chapter or we can go up here and we can go directly to any uh, particular chapter. Now, I'm going to show you our remixer. And I reached the remixer. Uh, oh, I can log in. That makes things a little better. I can reach the remixer through the tools menu. Here it is, and I'm going to put a one. I think. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go get, I've made my map, build a psychology book, and my map says that the first chapter is the introduction from this book. I'm just going to drag it over here. And I'm going to drag, uh, say, chapter five over. Notice that it renumbers. We have an automatic renumbering option. option. Uh, for properly formatted books, that renumbers equations, uh, videos, pictures, everything. So I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, now let's say I wanted some statistics. Statistics is important in psychology, obviously. Uh, so let's... Uh, that book, and here's the introduction. And let me put that there. Now I'm going to actually now create this book. Just takes a few seconds. Uh, obviously, the more chapters you uh, put in, the longer it takes. And now my text is going to be available to me. There it is. And I can look here. And let's say I want to look at the basic definitions and concepts. Notice this, this is a fork. What does that mean? Well, if I edit this, I haven't created another copy of the book the way, the way it's done in many remixers with just simply scrape sorts of uh, places, but I created a link. So there's only one copy of this. Uh, but let's say I need to change something here. I can click on the fork. And now if I go to edit it, and what I'm doing is I'm editing this only in my sandbox. I'm not editing the original material. So when I save it, There it is. There it is. Okay, so that's remixing. I'd like to point out uh, another feature that we've introduced just about a week and a half ago. We we used this earlier with a larger set of languages, but because of the emergency now, we providing uh, AI translation, automatic translation into. Ukrainian, and if I went to the uh, next chapter, it stays in Ukrainian. I don't have to keep on doing that. Uh, so some other features 
that I think are important. Uh, this is yet not yet fully uh, implemented, but it's coming very soon. And this is a demonstration. Uh, if somebody takes a paragraph from one, one book and another book and another book and a third book, it automatically is associated with where it came from. And you can find a link to the original source, the title, and the license. So you can do that for all of the uh, sections in this uh, test page. That's something that we're going to push across the uh, entire library uh, very, very soon. Let me show you a few other things here. I'm going to. Hang on a second. Okay. Well, um, if you're old like me, you can make the text bigger. You can increase the margin size to make it more readable. You can go to various modes. This is the Beeline Reader, which it, uh, helps people who have trouble reading uh, very often. You can, for example, um, do something like this. Uh, you can go to, oops, sorry. Um, dark mode that helps people. Uh, we have a variety of other tools. Uh, you can go to our homework system. We have a the Jupyter Hub. Uh, we have uh, you can get a citation. This page isn't associated with the book, but we do that. Come over here. So um, tools, page citation, generate a citation to this page, various things. You can get an attribution. Uh, we can produce licensing reports for entire books, showing you what percentage has which license and where it is. Uh, that can be downloaded, that's useful. You can bookmark the page so you can come back to it quickly. Uh, we also have some developers tools. Uh, we have problems, uh, examples. We can reveal the answers across the entire uh, book, uh, various other things. And with that, I'm going to stop and hopefully there are some questions. If you have questions, uh, we can always be reached at info at libertex.org, and we can always be reached at our office hours. I'm uh, on the east coast of the U.S., so if anybody is in Europe, uh, it's easier to reach me at jhalpern at uh, libertex.org, or at my, uh, and uh, Delmar Larson, who also runs the office hours, is uh, on the west coast of the U.S., so that's more convenient for people who are in Hawaii and Asia. A lot of material on our YouTube channel. And if you want to join us, here's the URL for joining us. Although you can perhaps more easily go there simply by clicking on instructor. Thanks again.